Hey there! It's me Eden. If you are new to the channel then please subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for early access, link in the comment, thanks. Julie interrupted. Mark, I promised not to paint your nails when you were asleep. May I go ahead and paint your toenails now? Well, why not? She held up royal blue nail polish, to contrast with that on my fingers. I felt her slip off my tennis shoes and socks. As I kept handing up rollers and papers, all the women were fussing over me and chattering about how much fun this was. Well, it was my hair that was being pulled and stretched tight. The smell from the chemicals they daubed on each roller didn't help my mood much either. At least Sarah would smile every now and then and give me a thumbs up sign and mouth, I love you. After the longest time, my hair was rolled, the chemicals applied, a plastic cap put on, and again I was under a dryer. After the buzzer rang, Tina unwrapped my hair, handing me the rollers to put back in the box. There must have been hundreds. Then she picked my hair out and fluffed it up, until I looked like a sunflower or something. A few artful snips from scissors, and soon my hair took on the shape of Julie's tussle. Then Tina said, this part will sting a little, Mark. She daubed my earlobes with disinfectant, then one, two, tree, in my left earlobe, and one, two in my right, now all filled with small gold studs. It smarted a bit, but not bad. She explained how to keep my ears from getting infected, and said that by Sunday morning I would be able to wear prettier earrings. The women, under Tina's guidance, looked carefully at me, then back at Julie. Eyebrows, someone said. They all nodded. Even with mine lightened in color, they were still pretty bushy and wild. Don't worry about this, Mark, Tina said as she picked up an electric clipper and comb. Men do trim their eyebrows. She buzzed over them, shortening them and making them less unruly. Then she looked back at Julie. I could wax them a little to shape them nicer, right here on the bottom of the arch and here at the ends, she said, pointing at my brows. They wouldn't be too thin for a man's, but still would help him look more like Julie. Is that okay? Mom nodded. I nodded. I thought she meant something like you put in your hair to make it stand up. She applied a few spots, then O.W. Off came the wax, and a bunch of eyebrow hair with it. I'm used to pain, because bicycle racers tend to fall off their bikes every now and then and get their legs or arms scraped up pretty badly. This just caught me off guard. Tina said, Mark, don't worry about being too feminized when the six weeks is up. Lots of teen boys aren't as conservative as you and experiment with their looks. You can come back from your trip with two little hoops in each ear, unless you just want to let the holes grow over. You can keep your hair blonde, or we can color it back to dark brown, and your brows, too. Nobody will suspect anything. That was reassuring. Tina fussed a little with eyeshadow and mascara, some highlight on my cheeks, and lipstick, and said, Tata. Because of the extra makeup, I not only looked like Julie, I even looked more feminine than she did. Welcome to the club, sweetie, Tina smiled. You look great, if I do say so myself. And I did, if I conveniently put aside the fact that I was a guy. Julie started snapping pictures of me, she was always a bit of a camera nut. Wait a minute, I said. What are you planning to do with those pictures? Julie smiled. Don't worry, Mark. You're saving my life and Sarah's by going through with all this. I promise you that I won't blackmail you or embarrass you with any pictures I take of you during all this. If I show them to other people, I'll tell them that they are pictures of me. And someday, you might enjoy seeing them, yourself. Mother and son? Daughter? When we came home, it was after eleven. I was glad that we had an enclosed garage and I could slip from there into the kitchen. 
It was after eleven, and I was exhausted, and I definitely didn't want nosy neighbors to think that Julie was spending the night. Dad was astounded at my appearance, but didn't say much. He just smiled and shook his head. Mom helped me off with my makeup. She laid out a pink nightgown, panties, and bra for me. You'll need to wear the bra at nights when you're at Hope Haven. Otherwise, there might be an emergency. You'd run out into the hallway, and there you'd be. I thought about that as I slipped back out of her sight to change into the panties. Then I asked for help with the bra. She showed me how to hook it and turn it around. It was padded, not very much, but neither was Julie. Mom, I appreciate your help, but sometimes I wonder if you're getting a little too enthusiastic. Mark, I love you dearly, and I wouldn't trade you for anyone. But yes, I'm enjoying this, maybe a little more than I should, because I had always wanted for you to have a sister. I think you're doing a wonderful thing here, and you'll be a better man for it. I am so proud of you. Besides, we only have tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday together to get you prepared for what's going to be a really challenging experience. I just smiled and kissed her good night. This was getting way strange, but it meant I got to be together with Sarah. I slept restlessly. Each time I woke, I was aware of the sore earlobes and eyebrows and nails that tended to catch on things, bending back and pulling on my fingers. And I dreamed. I dreamed that I woke up with large, real breasts, wide hips, and nothing between my legs. When I woke up with a start and covered with sweat, I discovered that what was between my legs was actually quite large. I put my sexy blue fingernails to work to relieve the pressure. With the feeling I may be doing quite a lot of that in the next six weeks, I got dressed in last night's outfit, the blue jumper and blouse. I almost had to yell for mom to help, trying to get the buttons on the jumper and the blouse fastened with my long nails, but I made it on my own. It was Saturday morning, only five days ago. Mom and I puttered around, gathering what little I needed for the trip, since Julie was putting together most of my specialized wardrobe. Mom had me practice putting on makeup time after time until it got easier, and I looked less scary. Your eyes are a little smaller than Julie's, but if you use eyeshadow, that will help compensate. And Julie's eyes are greenish blue, so I'd use light green tints to bring out what little green you have in yours. Mom told me a bunch of stuff that I had already figured out. Like not to ogle when I went into a women's restroom to sit down to pee, stuff like that. Then she surprised me a bit. Mark, you know how Sarah has been discouraged a lot lately. Sure, she has a lot to be discouraged about, but I think she'll get over it. Mom looked deeply concerned. Sarah's taken a huge blow to her body image. It's hard for her to see herself as attractive. She's going to be depending on you to be the one to let her know she's still acceptable. She'll be very vulnerable, very fragile emotionally. Sometimes she may act grateful and other times hateful. Do you know how to deal with that, Mom? We've talked about the sex thing. I won't take advantage of her vulnerability. I won't try to seduce her. It's more than that, Mark. She may try to seduce you just to prove she can and feel rejected if she doesn't. You'll have to walk a very fine line emotionally, giving her the security that she needs without it going too far. Well, it was something to think about. So I asked what we were doing for lunch. When uncomfortable, change the subject. She smiled. You and I and Mrs. Holding are going out for lunch and on a shopping trip. Thursday, June nineteenth. Sarah was feeling pretty weak yesterday. So today I dressed up more than she had ever seen me in a really cool khaki dress. That impressed her. This evening I told her the story of how I came to have it. And since that comes next in the story, I can tell you. The shopping trip. A shopping trip. With me like this. 
I may fool people at the university hospitals and Hope Haven, but I can't go around Fort Russell where Julie's friends might see me. Sure you can, she smiled. But I thought you were just going to give me girl tips today. Learning by doing, honey. Julie is spending some time with Sarah today. If someone thinks you're Julie, just act like her. And act like Mrs. Holding is your mother. You're going to be awfully inexperienced in acting like a girl if you don't start until tomorrow afternoon. Besides, there's some things I want to buy you, special things. Oh, by the way, she reached down and pulled up a bulky pair of panties. This is my little invention for you. They have pads on the sides, held in by Velcro patches, to give you hips so your clothes will fit better. You might go try them on before Vivian Holding gets here. I'm not the only one who changes subjects. I went to the bathroom and changed. It did seem to make even the loose jumper fit a little better. When Mrs. Holding arrived, Mom made sure that I checked my lipstick. Then it was into the car and to the mall. We had lunch at a gourmet burger place near the mall. I discovered that with my new nails it was easier to pick up burgers than to pick up silverware to eat the slaw, but I slowly got the hand of it. Lunch was fine and a lot of fun in spite of my self-consciousness. I knew objectively that nobody would recognize me, but still. Mom accompanied on my first trip to a woman's bathroom since I was three, and I must have passed her test. As we sat down in the car, Mom explained her agenda. We have your underwear, as you know. We'll stop off at the bicycle store and get you a larger helmet, probably in a girl's style, to fit over your curls better. Then I want to get you a nice outfit or two, a dress, hose, some fashionable shoes. Mom, why? Hope Haven is informal, hospitals aren't dressy, they're full of people in white robes and scrubs and gowns with no backs. Jeans, t-shirts, shorts, that sort of thing like Julie's packing will be fine. Several reasons. We and the Holdings are planning to drive up on alternate weekends. We'd like to go to church with you, and hopefully with Sarah. We want Sarah to get out a little bit, away from Hope Haven. We may take you to some nice dinners, and we're going to give you some money so you can do that for Sarah, too. We're not talking evening gowns or formals, honey, just something nice. The other reason is that we want you to know what it's like. We have to wear outfits like that practically every day to work, you know. She smiled. Fine. More torture. In the women's clothing store, Mom and Mrs. Holding were having entirely too much fun pulling dresses off racks, holding them up to me, and asking me to try some on. Don't be embarrassed, dear, you'll seem out of character, Mom would whisper. Mrs. Holding giggled. No, it won't. Julie gets embarrassed when I take her shopping for good clothes. But don't you love this navy skirt? And these blouses coordinate so nicely. I had just come out of the dressing room wearing the navy blue skirt and the white blouse with the navy trim. Unfortunately, I don't suppose my tennis shoes set the outfit off too well. The outfit felt kind of nice, and I have to admit it did look classy in a conservative, professional sort of way. My two imams were admiring it and making little comments, nodding their heads. If I had to wear something more formal at all, though, I still thought I should look like an 18-year-old teen more than a 30-year-old businesswoman. Then I saw Carrie, pronounce it Predo, please, Predo's coming. She's one of the innest of the inn, always wearing the coolest clothes and hanging with the coolest people. Also, she knows it. Normally she would look past Julie, or me, and pretend we weren't there unless she wanted something from us. I was desperately hoping that would happen this time, and that hope was all that kept me from dashing back into the dressing room. It wasn't to be. Julie, she waved and smiled. Don't you look nice today? And I don't think I've ever seen you with so much makeup on, even at the honors banquet. Act like Julie would, I thought. 
Be polite, but do not let her get to you. Hi, Carrie. It's so nice to see you. Here let me introduce you to my mother, Mrs. Holding, and to my Aunt Fran. They all nodded, smiled, and touched hands. I know the makeup isn't quite me, but these two ladies treated me to a makeover because I'm leaving for college next week. I have to admit I enjoyed it. It's not usual that a jock like me gets so much pampering. I understand you're going to Stanford, wasn't it? I knew that Stanford had turned her down and she was going to state. Well, it turns out that state has a better program in fashion design, she lied, so I decided to go there instead. But mom went there, and I'm sure once I get into my mom's sorority, I'll have a great time. It's the best on campus, you know. You're going to that little college down the road, aren't you, Julie? Did you have to take some remedial courses that you're going this summer? No, I'm going to be an instructor in some of their sports clinics. Time to change the subject. That's a great dress you have folded over your arm. Did you just buy it? She smiled and unfolded the khaki dress with teal trim. Classy, understated, and great lines, and it looked comfortable, too. I ooed over it. I usually buy at St. Clair's, but sometimes you can find something nice in the department stores, for every day, comfy wear. It was over in the Mrs. department, but they may have it in larger sizes, like I was fat or something. I'm sure that Julie's body fat ratio as an athlete was a lot lower than Miss Curvy here, but I just smiled. I hope so. It's darling. I was picking up the vocabulary, it seems, and the drawl sounded right, too. Now maybe she'll go away. And Mrs. Harding, she said to Julie's mom, my I'm mom. I was so sorry to hear about your daughter Sally. To think, someone that pleasant and cheerful, and she may never walk again. What a loss. What will happen to her? And I don't suppose that Mark is around anymore. Boys just can't be depended upon. Morbid curiosity at work, and now I was ticked. She had patronized and insulted just about everybody. Mom was about to speak, and I blurted my feelings. Callie, let me tell you something about real life and real people. Yes, Sarah Holding, not Sally Harding, lost her leg. Mark, thank you for getting his name right, it's fairly simple, so even you can manage it has been there for her practically every day. But I will promise you something. When you're fussing over a zit or a damaged cuticle in your sorority, she will be walking to class for her senior year at Fort Russell High. Her life isn't over, and I feel more sorry for you than I do for her. She's missing a leg, and our family isn't rich, but she has class that money can't buy, and she'll go farther than a lot of girls like you will in life, because you have a worse handicap, you think a good life is something people will just give you on a silver platter, and so you won't end up earning anything worthwhile. It was fun watching her lips thin out and her eyes bulge. I managed to keep my voice under control, and was glad when she spun around and left. What a self-absorbed airhead, I muttered. Would the two moms think I passed the girl test, or should I have ignored the catty stuff and just smiled? Their hugs showed I passed. This outfit I have on is very nice, moms, I smiled at them and lifted my arm in a modeling pose. But I noticed that they had a similar skirt in burgundy that will be a little livelier, yet still classy, so let's find that and let me try it on. Good idea, said Mrs. H, and Julie, I'm proud you are our daughter. That young lady may have been a bit of a snob, but she does have good fashion sense. That khaki was great. Mom nodded and grinned. Mrs. H, turned to Mom. I know that you were planning to buy a dressy outfit for her, Fran, but let me buy the khaki, if they have one that fits, for Julie for next fall, and this Julie can wear it whenever she wants. So that's what we did. Of course, Mom picked me out a casual blue floral print skirt and a blouse that went well with it. Then, of course, 
came the shoe warehouse, also at the mall, for matching pumps to the burgundy and blue outfits, and some funky leather sandals that would go great with the khaki and just about anything else. Okay, okay, so I was starting to get into it. We'll probably give away the shoes after I'm through with this, but Julie's going to get a great wardrobe. I thought I had enough hose, but mom picked up some more knee highs at the shoe place. Accessories were next. Mrs. Holding had instructed me earlier to watch the ears of teenage girls, not usually the first thing I looked to, and notice what they were wearing. I did that, and it was kind of fun picking out several sets of earrings. Some hoops and dang lies for the bottom hole and smaller studs for the others, a couple of chain bracelets, a pinky ring, and some pins for my blouses finished my a new look. On the way out, we passed a jeans store. I stopped and admired a baby blue pair of cut-off bib overalls, with an embroidered tigger on the bib, look at that, I called. Doesn't that look like something Julie would love? Or something you'd love, Mom grinned. It'll go great with your nails and eyes. Okay, you're going to save us enough in grocery money over the next six weeks by eating on Hope Haven's budget that I think I can afford the bibs. And you said that I was the one who was really getting into this. Okay, maybe we'd both end up on Springer, but we're enjoying one another. I trusted the two moms to run into the bike shop to get me a new helmet, too many people there knew Julie and me way, way, too well. Then another car pulled in next to mine, and Teresa Williams got out, a basketball teammate of Julie's. Julie, hi, she waved. She asked me how Sarah Beth was doing, but her asking was from genuine concern. Then I could see a puzzled look on her face. Julie, baby, I've looked at your eyes a thousand times, and I could have sworn they were green. Contacts. I thought that colored ones would be fun to try, but I'm not too thrilled with them. She told me that she had to run, waved, and went into the store. I was glad this trip was about over, way too much chance of getting caught. When the two moms came out, I wasn't too surprised that the helmet was pink. Except for being form-fitting to different forms, the male and female racing uniforms for the ocelots were alike, yes, it has a splash of color like ocelot fur and neon bright paw prints running around the logos. So I guess that hot pink on the helmet is subtle by comparison. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access. Link in the comment, thanks.